I take it this is this is going to be fairly brief, but um, it's an important topic. Um, my group um, developed a separate open source program called Profiles Research Networking Software. It's if you go to a lot of medical schools or research centers, you'll see they all have a public website that has a, like an online profile of each of the different researchers at their organization. Um, so Profiles is uh, one of a number of different tools that um, support several dozen institutions that have these kinds of searchable expertise websites on them. This is not a foundation project. Um, it's a the Profiles is separate from ICB2 and Transmart, but it turns out to be actually very relevant. And this came out during um, 4C. As um, Zach mentioned this morning, uh, we were able to really quickly reach out and to a, a large community of people that we knew and pull together a group of more than 100 experts. Um, I really briefly mentioned in my talk, but we have these things called triads. They are combinations of informaticians, biostatisticians or epidemiologists, and, uh, and clinicians, experts in clinical medicine. And bringing those three different kinds of people together really is able to answer, ask the right research questions and have the skills to use the data and do the analysis properly to answer them. Um, so you know, that kind of showed us, as well as other things like the rapid, the large teams that came, to, came together to develop vaccines and do other international studies, that this sort of team building is a really important piece that complements the actual informatics tools that we have. Um, so profiles developed by um, myself, Nick Brown, James, Ken, Steve, Anna Palma, Kristen, and Takash, um, who've helped along with development and testing of this. And uh, a year ago, and it was really made possible by um, Dell providing the hardware support for this website. We took our profile software and created a website called COVID Authors. Um, profiles is usually used to show the faculty at, at an organization like Harvard, or UCSF, or research organization. We can also build a profile site around the topic. So we based this off of a, a separate website called Lit COVID. This is created by the National Library of Medicine. It's sort of a, a, a view of PubMed that shows all the publications that have been written about COVID since um, now about a year and a half ago. Um, so you can view those publications, timelines for those publications. You can break it out by different topics, see what's going on about research related to vaccines or other things, but it doesn't have information about these people that are writing these articles. So we took the COVID uh, articles and lit COVID, we ran them through our profiles, author disambiguation engine. What this thing does is it pulls out the authors of publications and it puts them together. So if there's two different publications written by Griffin Weber, it knows that that's one person and creates a profile for me. Um, when we started this uh, around March or April last year, there were about 10,000 publications at that time, which um, I thought was sort of crazy for a brand new research topic, usually a new a topic in PubMed takes years to develop, um, but now a year later, there are over 126,000 articles in PubMed about COVID uh, with 475,000 authors. Um, so we've created this website, it's a searchable uh, program. You can type in different keywords and you find the different experts um, publishing um, COVID related that. Uh, you can use this to find experts to help assemble teams, track provenance of publications. If there's a new EHR study that comes out, you can figure out who are these people and have they written about EHR data before. Um, you can discover people with COVID-19 data sets, many other use cases um, for this. And it's based on the profiles of RNS open source software. So it doesn't not, it not only generate the profile for people, it gives you various you know, statistics metrics. It shows you timelines of their publications. Most of the people um, who are writing about COVID-19 are not viral, but they're coming in from all different kinds of backgrounds. I have publications on COVID-19. I never thought two years ago I'd be writing about viruses, but you know, I somehow have a, a particular skill and resources that turned out to be very useful in, in this pandemic. And we have various visualizations that show how people collaborate across this consortium um, and different geographic maps and cluster views to show the different teams and their overlaps. Um, we are going to be expanding this website out. It keeps growing, adding new features to it. In particular, we're going to be looking at subgroups and populations within this network of 475,000 authors. So who are the groups that are working on vaccines? Um, what kind of international collaborations and others are going on? So it's exciting to see how this is evolving and how this enormous um, community of researchers around the world are coming together uh, to study COVID. And I'd like to just thank again the 
uh, Dell for um, you know really making this all possible, and um, my team at Harvard for developing the uh, the code behind the website. Thanks. Any questions?